the World Trade Organization has ruled that the United States is flouting trading rules by labeling Hong Kong made products as made in China. The WTO supported Hong Kong's contention that the practice was discriminatory. The ruling also states that the U.S. policy doesn't qualify for the WTO's national security exemption, as things between the U.S. and Hong Kong didn't constitute an emergency in international relations. China's Ministry of Commerce says it supports Hong Kong's status as a separate customs territory. The U.S. has called the ruling flawed. Mahosu Kali Makiyama is the director of the European Center for International Political Economy and a leading trade expert. Good to see you again. Um, Hossu, can you first of all give us a little bit of background on this? Why did the U.S. change the way they worked with Hong Kong? Well, the background, or perhaps I should say pretext to this dispute, is about the fact that the World Trade Organization, unlike the UN and other international organizations, does not actually consist of nations as members, but actually by customs territories and customs authorities, which is why Hong Kong and other special administrative regions of China are actually a member of the WTO in their own right. So back in 2020, the United States, under President Trump, I should add, revoked the U.S. 1992 Hong Kong Policy Act, uh, which recognized Hong Kong as a separate customs territory. And the uh, Trump administration thereby argued that it was no longer sufficiently autonomous from mainland China, and therefore requiring basically all imports, all trade from Hong Kong to be marked as made in China rather than made in Hong Kong. Now, the U.S. market, though, only accounts for about 0.1 percent of Hong Kong's exports. So what does this decision really mean for business? Well, I think you're being generous there, because <laughs> I don't think the odd 20 billion U.S. imports from Hong Kong actually even adds up to 0.1 percent of, of international trade. But it's actually more than that. I have to give you a little bit of a heads up. The heart of the matter is actually not about Hong Kong at all. It's actually about the U.S. legal defense strategy. The U.S. basically refused to argue the merits of its case. And there are many lawyers who would actually argue that the United States could have won the case if it actually sat down and decided to actually engage the, um, the WTO court and basically argue its technical merits of its argumentation. But uh, effectively, the United States refused to argue and invoke the national security exception under the WTO rules, which are fairly unique. And uh, basically, um, the jurisprudence of uh, WTO basically says that all rules about fair play, non-discrimination, equal treatment goes out of the window if one of the members basically says it is about an issue it deems as a matter of national security or an emergency in international relations. There's a very complex legal argument here, but basically the WTO panel has decided that there is no emergency between Hong Kong and the United States. It's a bogus argument. There are indications, though, um, Hossuk, that the US isn't planning to do anything about this, not to do anything differently despite this ruling. So what could this all mean for already tense trade between the US and China? Indeed. Uh, I think we shouldn't actually think of the question as lawyers. And if you're in the business and if you're actually um, uh, importing and exporting and relying on well, predictable international rules on trade, I think this is more important than ever because it's not about, as we said, Hong Kong export to the United States. It's actually about all trade with the United States because what the United States have basically done is that it, it has very clearly indicated that all these rules – uh, that were, we have built up over the 70 years could go straight out through the window because as far as they're concerned, all of this was agreed under the understanding that there is a national security emergency break. If that doesn't exist, everything else is also off the table. We could technically see the United States while well, leaving the organization, or at least not recognizing its illegal standing, and uh, in the end, in international law, there is no such thing as a world authority. It's all a voluntary contract. United States can say, basically, without this exception, all this market access that we have enjoyed in the 70 years is actually no longer guaranteed. It's fascinating stuff. Hosokli Makiyama, thank you very much.